the good evening, good evening there. Uh, good, still good morning in, in Europe. Um, um, I just wanted to go through some uh, um, some concepts around uh, uh, the ESPs. Um, uh, today we will go through ESP system. Uh, tomorrow we will go through PCP system. And uh, so uh, the idea is just review some concepts, uh, basic concepts to those who base, uh, are related to or involved in the artificial list system, ESPs and gas lift are the most common uh, systems, uh, you know, we are uh, using in the oil and gas industry. And uh, particularly the ESP is, is quite common, is, uh, but it still is, uh, you know, it's a lot of things that we, we don't know or we don't understand. Uh, basically is because we always, you know, we, the humans being, we are looking for recipes, you know, or do this and get this. And uh, in our industry, nothing is like that. You know, we, uh, first of all, we have to understand that uh, the reservoir is a live uh, entity. It means uh, there are changes every minute because we are producing, we are, uh, I mean, the, the reservoir is decreasing the pressure, uh, maybe some water or gas is uh, getting inside uh, uh, the reservoir. So, I mean, it's every change, it changes everywhere, but still we are approaching the solutions kind of in a, you know, homogeneous, uh, non-changing environment, which is not really, I mean, the, the, again, it's not really the, the, the way the system is working. But anyway, we are, there are some tools, analysis that we have to go through in order to understand. And, uh, you know, there are basic concepts like the inflow, performance, outflow performance, in, sometimes it's uh, either natural flow or in this case, artificial flow. It is a little bit more complex uh, analyzing the, the inflow system uh, when we have a, an, an additional piece like a, a pump or gas leaf or any type of artificial leaf in the system once we the system or the reservoir is not able to to produce in a natural way or we are accelerating the the, pro, the approach anyway we we will start uh, today as um, the esp system uh, again my name is Jairo Alcácer and uh, as uh, it was mentioned i have experience in in completion production so it's a lot of, uh, you know, field uh, experience. Uh, but anyway, uh, this doesn't mean that, uh, you know, I, I have the, the, I am an expert, I know basics. Uh, so it's just to share this, this uh, knowledge with you guys. And um, the agenda is uh, well productivity concepts. Uh, just review again some, uh, which is, you know, the building for for our production system analysis is uh, we have to start with the uh, well productivity concept. So and focus on the ESP is uh, some advantages, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Um, the ESP and uh, so again, um, going back to the agenda. Uh, ESP in non-standard conditions. Uh, how is uh, that related to the, you know, the the, the functioning um, proper operation of the ESP? Uh, production of viscous fluids. Uh, as maybe you are aware uh, the pro the testing of the ESPs is under uh, standard conditions and uh, pressure temperature and the viscosity, the fluid is uh, water. Is, uh, so, but we are dealing with the different viscous uh, on a daily basis. Uh, low rate pumps, uh, normally the ESPs are meant to be high rate pumps. 
uh, gassy wells is uh, gas is one of the issues, one of the problems we uh, we face with ESPs uh, regarding the um, uh, proper functioning of the the ESP, uh, of course, a uh, production of uh, solids and sand, and we will this see a brief uh, design example. Um, regarding the well productivity concepts, um, uh, we know uh, basically the, the, the elements uh, involved in the productivity process, the reservoir pressure, which is the, the identity or, you know, of the reservoir, the rate at which we are producing the reservoir. And so uh, due to this uh, pressure or rate, sorry, uh, we have a pressure loss along the system from the reservoir, as we see here in this uh, plot, from the reservoir, we have uh, a pressure loss down to the uh, wellbore phase, then across the, the perforation. In this case, perforations are the type of completion. Uh, this is a meaning of a term that normally uh, in our industry we hear lower completion, upper completion. Completion is just a term. Completion is the, the communication from the wellboard to the reservoir. That's the completion. How we communicate that reservoir with the wellboard. How we produce either, either from, you know, we put a fracture, a, a, we perforate it, we put the gravel packing, we, I mean, those are type of completion. So we had to make clear this uh, when I'm mentioning completion, we are, I'm main, uh, the meaning is the, the connection between the wellboard and the reservoir. But the way it, this is the most critical uh, element in pressure loss. By controlling this, you are controlling or optimizing the production of the, the, that specific well. By controlling this communication, you know, in an efficient way. If you, uh, maybe you have uh, perforations, uh, you have to make sure how many of those perforations are open or how many are clogged due to the precipitation of uh, elements like asphaltines, paraffins, or um, any other elements of uh, creating uh, obstructions through the perforations. So, um, um, so the, as uh, here, uh, the efficient uh, use of the energy, the pressure in the system is, uh, of course, is uh, achieved by minimizing the pressure loss from the reservoir up to the separator. So there are many elements that we need to know. And uh, so in this particular case, the additional uh, piece we are getting in, in this system is the, the ESP. So we have to know how that element is is uh, of course is um, in relation with the whole system uh, regarding the pressure. Um, so here we have uh, sorry. Here we have the uh, simple system analysis, the inflow performance, which is the uh, the how is the performance of the reservoir into the wellbore. You know, um, if I say wellbore, it means um, you know, there is a difference between the reservoir engineering and particularly the simulations and uh, because the inflow from then is uh, up to the well phase. It's not the well bore, it's the well phase. It means in a, a simulation, uh, the well, the well is, uh, the well bore is zero, I mean, zero radius. So, and this is a different concept uh, we will uh, see later on. And then we have the outflow, you know, and the, of course we have the, operate, the optimum operating rate here, as uh, you know, is the inter uh, when we get the inflow and outflow, uh, you know, uh, intercommunication, interrelation. There are um, some uh, topics uh, or ideas uh, related to the system anal analysis, a stable versus unstable flow, 
You know, we have the minimum floor right here and uh, everything to the right is, uh, is positioned on a stable floor and everything to the left of the, the, the minimum rate is unstable operation. This is loading, this is basically to the left, we are dealing with loading um, uh, of a liquid in the well board, which at the end we will, here we have another point of inter intersection with the inflow, but in this case is unstable condition. So it means, uh, sooner or later, due to the loading of liquids in the, in the well board, the well will be, you know, uh, will die. And this, the stable operation right here to the right is uh, meaning, you know, uh, every time we move from the, the stable point, the system will go and uh, come back to the stable operation due to pressure increase, here, when we move to D, the pressure of the system will increase right because we are right here. Uh, and then that is an state is the is, is a higher pressure than the optimum pressure, which is here in the, in the junction. So naturally the system will decrease and come back to the natural uh, condition for that operation. This remember, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have to bear, uh, bear in mind that, uh, you know, the system is a uh, downhole, the reservoir is changing. So this is like a picture for a moment. So we are not expecting to have this for a uh, year. So we have to be checking the conditions, uh, you know, with time. Hopefully we have uh, information on pressure downhole, things like that. Um, here is a comparison of uh, different system in terms of the optimum the rate. We have here a natural flow to the point to the left uh, side, natural flow, which is the spec, this is the expected rate. Um, and then we have here, um, then different systems. And we see that uh, the, the ESP or electrical pump, uh, is the the highest uh, rate that we we can get um, when compare different pumping system it is a reference just to to have in mind this uh... <coughs> now we have the inflow performance sun phase versus well board that i mentioned uh, before this the green uh, inflow performance is the the ideal this is kind of uh, uh, simulation or reservoir engineering point of view, but the red one is the wellbore, the inflow performance at the wellbore. It means once the um, the fluid has come from uh, or have the pressure drop across the reservoir, and then from here, from this point, uh, the the which is the well phase. Um, sun phase to the to the um, well board. So it means right here we have an extra pressure drop that is pressure drop due to completion. So it means against completion being the way we you know set up the the well board in order to or communicate the well board with the uh, reservoir. That is a, so we have a, a considerable um, a different in the pressure when we are dealing with some phase versus well board. So just, this is something that we have to bear, uh, you know, keep in mind always, you know, we are dealing with, uh, normally we are measuring the pressures downhole means uh, flowing pressure we are not measuring pressures at the sun phase and uh, that pressure well board, it means we have already, that has already included the pressure drop due to the completion. Uh, here, you know, what, what is the effect of, uh, you know, if uh, we are considering either the sun phase uh, inflow performance versus the well board. And if we, the tubing curve is a small tubing, 
you know, there is a small difference in the rate that we are, we should expect, but here to the right, when we are having a large tubing, so there is a considerable, you know, difference in the rate from the sun phase. It means the ideal or Darcy's type of uh, equation versus the real, real um, downfall pressure. So again, we have to be aware always that where we are having this. This is basically a completion sensitivity. Again, the, the green, green curve is the Darcy type of uh, uh, equation. And uh, the ones to the right are either fracture or either acid stimulated, uh, basically carbonates. So we are having an um, effective stimulation on the wellbore, or if we are having the, these ones uh, to the left of the green one, we are having uh, perforations and they are not properly, you know, perforations. Normally we do not uh, perforate the whole interval. We just pick the most productive uh, um, zones or areas. And so we are creating an extra pressure drop due to, uh, you know, uh, confining flow into the perforation. So, but this is not the, 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 the main subject for this course. So ESP is a system advantages. We have, you know, some really, you know, it's a, ESPs are considered a high volume pumps, you know, um, they are quite safe and uh, acceptable operation in offshore, especially offshore, due to the low um, surface uh, required. And, you know, so it's um, especially in, in sensitive areas where environment or uh, safety is a, a top priority. Uh, it is um, can run in highly debated walls, uh, almost horizontal walls, 80, 85. So it's sometimes there are fields where they basically they run it only uh, in the horizontal section. Uh, the minimum space for surface control and, and facilities. Um, allows working uh, over well producing wells in uh, you know when we are drilling you know next uh, well bore you know the we get, there is no issue on producing the well with uh, at least I have been in fields where we we have done that you know uh, we have of course we have to uh, follow the simultaneous operations uh, policies and uh, if uh, properly designed and operated, relatively low maintenance. But uh, again, it's properly designed and operated. We will see that ESPs are trying, uh, kind of picky in the way that you know the maximum, the optimum performance is due to the. Uh, it's a, it's not a, it's a really narrow um, space. So uh, we will see that, uh, of course. Mm, disadvantages, um, uh, very low flexibility from uh, in, in the case of constant electric uh, frequency. We, we uh, you know, those cases where we don't have a BSD uh, control, um, the liquid production really cap capacity is, is uh, limited. Uh, so in those cases, the proper design is really crucial. But again, as I mentioned, we are dealing with, uh, you know, a, in a system where pressure is changing, temperature is maybe temperature downhaul is changing. So many, the, you know, many, many of the properties of the, that we, we assume when we were designing the, the ESP are changing probably, you know, very fast. And we are expecting the ESP to be producing under, you know, the same condition. So it, this is not the, the, the right way. So in case of uh, gas, um, you know, 
higher than 5%, it requires a separator is one of the issues or another issues in case of uh, you know uh, when uh, solids productions or uh, you know sun uh, so we have to consider uh, the, the the some resistant materials you know but the issues with this uh, those materials are really expensive and um, also, of course, you know, uh, well interventions uh, are required when we have a failure in the in one of the components, either the, the pump, the seal section, or the motor. So we have to pull the, the, the ESP system. There are some uh, systems which is, uh, uh, can be um, used or retrieved with cold tubing, um, so I have a paper in LinkedIn, uh, which is rigless ESP technologies. You know, if uh, somebody wants to 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 see, you know, it's basically it's a, a ESP PCP system, which is a motor and uh, seal sections, and uh, are like ESP, but the pump is like PCP. So in case there is a failure. Of the pump, normally, uh, the or most probably the failures are due to the pump uh, failure. Uh, so in this case, we can, you know, e either with the cold tubing or a system, you know, small, a small system, um, work cover unit, but not really rig unit. We can pull and in. In half a day, we can replace the the, the, the pan. In this case, again, if somebody wants to just uh, regular CSP technology, is is a paper can give more details. In the uh, ESP uh, optimization, I mean efficiency, we have here that. This is the range in the yellow area. This is the range where you are expect, we are expecting the maximum efficiency for the pump. And we see that, you know, uh, we are dealing with, you know, a rate which is uh, below that area. There is a drastic, you know, uh, uh, drop in the efficiency. That's, that is one of the issues. Or either to the to the right of the efficiency curve, uh, that is one of the issues with the ESPs, you know, because of uh, either the trust or the down trust, uh, you know, situations uh, or uh, characteristic of the ESPs uh, system. So again, if we don't have uh, a system to control the the, the speed, we are, you know, we have to be aware that this is the range and anytime we are dealing with the, you know, the, the rate, which is something normal we should expect in the well board uh, the, from the reservoir, decreasing the, decreasing the productivity. So it is probably we in few months, after we run the, the ESP, we are all already in you know in an area where the efficiency is, is really low. Um, the ESP system for conventional is uh, for conventional applications is low viscosity and high rates and non-optimum conditions. Uh, of course, they they will affect you know the efficiency of the of the ESP system. Is so the solution for this uh, this situation is uh, this uh, is the uh, just use uh, different equipment or modify procedures uh, in order to deal with this type of uh, situation. A uh, production of uh, viscous fluids. Normally, <coughs> I was in a project where we produce. Um, uh, oil of uh, between seven and nine API. So it was not heavy, it was extra heavy. And we produce this, of course, you, we have to inject uh, a diluent downhole just to make sure, you know, the, 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 at least we help 
or decrease the viscosity of the fluid, but still, you know, it was a big challenge. So there are ways of, uh, you know, to, to face those challenges, but we have to, it's a trade off, you know, we can use the, the system, but uh, the efficiency will be, you know, of course, you know, uh, affected. Um, and of course, uh, in, this, uh, in this situation, we have uh, the heavy oils, as I mentioned, um, the low bubble point pressure, um, where there is no free gas at the, at the pump intake. Um, so in that case, uh, the use of ESP is, uh, is, is, quite, is quite good because, uh, because of the free gas, which is uh, always affecting the ESPs. Um, the main effect of the increased viscosity are you know, rapid uh, pump capacity decrease, you know, um, decreasing the head development by, by the pump, uh, the power to light the pump, of course, you know, is a high heat, you know, so it, the efficiency is uh, it decreased and also uh, the power requirements is increased. And of course, everything is uh, going to, or leading to reduce pump efficiency. Um, if uh, the viscosity is not considered then, uh, I mean, the ESP unit would be, you know, working under very strange conditions. So we have to, you know, when designing the ESP, uh, first, you know, we have to be in contact with the, the pump supplier and let them know the, the conditions, you know, and uh, just come up with the solution. They, they are aware of the, the situation and so, the design is considering those uh, string conditions. And so the, the, the pump uh, life is, you know, is uh, as long as uh, we may expect if, you know, we are dealing with the, those uh, conditions. Um, so um, every, of course, every pump manufacturer has their own uh, corrections to face uh, with this uh, condition, with every condition uh, deviated from the standard conditions. The low rate pumps, as I mentioned, you know, one of the advantages of the ESPs is they, they normally are high rate pumps, but um, there are some low rate pumps, um, um, there are some, which is uh, low volume applications, uh, which uh, in this case, they are competing with the uh, uh, PCPs or soccer rock pumps units. And um, uh, basically the, in, the, in the ESP area, is, uh, you know, they are working, they have been working on two, uh, two scenarios, a uh, pump stage design and housing uh, strength uh, improvement because uh, those are the, 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 the two issues that are being highly affected due to the low rate uh, production. Um, also, of course, in case of the deep pump setting, um, uh, the housing should be, you know, uh, very resistant because of, uh, you know, we are increasing the burst uh, pressure properties. Uh, so, uh, when increasing this, uh, the, the properties of those uh, ESPs, uh, we are able to produce um, low rates, you know, at a very low, very high, uh, you know, as a, something like 10,000 10, feet uh, deep wells. Um, uh, uh, Gassy wells, uh, we have, uh, you know, we we know the free gas uh, cannot uh, be produced through the pump uh, due to you know the the, the decrease in the efficiency. Um, some of the issues that the gas uh, will produce is the uh, of course the fluctuation of the pump uh, output, uh, which is called surging, 
uh, cyclic uh, changes in the motor load, of course, and cyclic uh, uh, loads in the ESP are very uh, detrimental because they will lead to failures. Uh, I mean, basically overheating and at the end, the failure of the ESP system. So it, this is not really uh, something that we want to face on the ESPs. I mean, the ESPs are really good as, as far as you get, keep maintaining the condition, a stable condition. So um, at the end, you know, we, if the ESP is facing so many changes, finally the, the control system, if we have, uh, of course, it's recommended to have always a control system, but this system will shut down the ESP and you know we are losing production. We have to wait till you know to investigate if the conditions are um, you know adequate to restart the ESP system or not, or do the changes to solve the situation. So uh, the, the specific sol solution like uh, non-standard uh, installation, gas separator. Uh, have to be, you know, uh, considered when we are dealing with in the design, uh, in particular, gas fluids uh, in this condition. The, uh, there is one way of um, checking if we can uh, produce the ESP in case of uh, gas wells, which is the uh, the called uh, the pump performance criteria. The limits of uh, the stable pump operation can be evaluated with the, this, this. This is the called the uh, turpin function. You know, it's uh, basically is a function of the the intake pressure uh, pressure and the the rates. So by using this, uh, we are deal, we are finding sorry uh, we are finding the stable operation, which is to the right of this curve, or an unstable operation based on what is called the guys void uh, fraction. So the, the, again, it's this, this is the terpene correlation. Uh, it, the gas void fraction is the percentage of free ga uh, gas in the total fluid. So um, the, and normally the, the equations or the programs software, they are, uh, they have this uh, calculation in the program. So uh, in the design process, they, they will show, you know, if the, we are dealing uh, with a stable operation or not. So uh, the amount of free gas handled by, by the problem increases with increasing suction of the problem as expected. Of course, we we are the pump intake is increasing, so we are compressing the gas. So, in this case, the amount of gas at the intake pressure increases if the pump intake is uh, is increased. Um, solution of the gas wells. Uh, some is the set the pump below the perforations. Uh, to make sure that velocity of the downward velocity lower than the gas rising velocity, uh, so which is 0.5 feet per second. Um, so in that case, we need to, cons uh, I mean, the, the separation of the gas should be in the annulus before uh, entering in the, in the pump. In this case, we require. In this case, we are setting. If we are setting the the, the pump below the perforation, it requires a rat hole or what is called a sump in the well. Um, so the question I he, here is: I put is any drawback? The answer is yes, because of the high temperature of the motors. Because if we are having the the intake, uh, I mean, the motor is below the intake of the pump. So in that case, the fluid is not passing through the, the motor, which is, uh, I mean, the fluid is supposed to, to cool the temperature of the motor. So in this case, we have to use what there is called 
the motor shroud, which is a to allow to uh, give a reverse flow separation is, is to force the fluid to come down pass through uh, across the the ESP and, and get up to the in uh, pump intake. So in this case, we are um, helping with the or cooling the, the temperature of the motor. Um, the ACs we have here, uh, schematic, we have uh, the perforation up right here, and then the pump, and this is the shroud system. So in this case, the oil is forced to come down and then reverse. In this situation, we are having right here with this turn in the flow direction, we are expecting to have the gas you know, liberation here, but still, if we are forcing gas right here, there is also another second kind of uh, gas liberation right here before passing through the motor than the seals and finally into the intake of the, the pressure. So um, another option is the deep uh, tube connected to the bottom of the regular shower. The benefits are improve the natural gas separation. The production is uh, uh, from a restricted area where the ESP would not pass, you know, or possible the, to use in horizontal sections. And the deep top uh, tube is reaching into the horizontal section. Uh, the, this in this case is uh, with open-ended shroud. This is the, the, what we are seeing right here. Uh, the inverted shroud is uh, the, in the case, they, they call it a reverse flow gas separator. So in this case, we have the perforations down here. We have the motor. So the fluid is uh, cooling the motor and passing and going into the shroud. But in this case, the, the, the intake of the fluid is from the here at the at the bottom is closed, so the, the fluid is forced to go up and then make a U-turn. So in this case, we are expecting here, again, two, uh, twice we have this kind of free gas separation, which is when we are, the, the fluid is coming from the perforations and make the turn to the right. And also right here, when at the top of the, this shroud, when we have the U-turn from the fluid, so we have an extra gas uh, liberation. So we hope that uh, with this, the amount of uh, gas coming into the, or passing through the, the pump is minimal. So, um, so in this case, as I mentioned, the gas is, uh, uh, directed into the annulus and then the liquid into the pump intake. Uh, of course, those are just two options. There are many options, different options. So right here to the left, we have a, a different system, uh, the, the inflow the, of the fluids, and there are some kind of uh, uh, internal or accelerator of uh, you know system, which uh, basically uh, um, guides the the gas into the annulus after passing in from from the from the this uh, system. Um, the in the case where, where we have uh, solids uh, or sun. Uh, of course, you know the the stages. The ESP is uh, you know is uh, is accumulation of uh, hundred in some cases hundred stages. So if we are dealing with uh, even even you know very fine solids like uh, toothpaste, something like that. If you get toothpaste and you get it in your in something even solids of this uh, size are causing a lot of uh, erosion in the, in the stages. So, because we have a lot of moving parts in the pump. 
uh, the impellers. Uh, so in this case, we are, I mean, uh, we are causing failures, you know, in the pond due to this uh, effect of abrasion of, uh, you know, the sun. Um, so in this case, uh, uh, those, uh, the production of those fluids require special uh, solutions. And of course, the materials, um, of course, uh, sun is the more tricky, uh, critical problem, um, which is something we commonly, you know, uh, find in uh, sun, uh, you know, sun or sandstone and uh, low consolidation or medium consolidation of the, of the rock. Um, Usually, in this case, we started uh, with high rates wells, which is the you know the, the major you know, characteristic uh, for the ESP system, or we have a water breakthrough, uh, which is uh, you know normally accelerates the, the, the process of some production, or uh, increases with changing in flow rate. Those are uh, you know, situation where we may expect, you know, solid productions. We have to be, uh, you know, uh, ready for those situations. And uh, basically, it's the type of uh, material we we order the ESPs, and uh, so and the type of, you know, how the the control of the 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 the, the pressure. So, um. Uh, basically, they, as I mentioned, the pillars are the, the parts of the pump that uh, will be, uh, you know, suffering. So, sun is a, it's a critical problem. Uh, it's uh, something that we we are uh, facing regularly. Um, some of the solutions uh, the we have a minimal, I mean, impellers and diffusers. Uh, there are mineral uh, metals like, uh, uh, which are alloy with a uh, high percent of uh, nickel. And there are hard surface contain uh, coatings you know, on critical spots or area. But again, those are, of course, you know, the, the cost is, is higher than the regular pump. Um, we have also uh, two steam carbide or ceramics, or usually is zirconia, uh, in order to, to uh, cover those areas where are in con direct contact with the with the solids of the sun. Uh, this is uh, we have axial wear and radial abrasion. Uh, um, in this case, second case, the most significant is the sun damage effect in ES, ESP units. So some of the solutions is uh, use, uh, use uh, rubber uh, in case uh, in the diffusion board um, or hardening uh, with a twisting carbide, which is again uh, expensive, uh, ceramics. And uh, one of the issues, they are very uh, brittle, so they are kind of, you know, uh, very easy to, to play. Um, so with this is, you know, again, uh, this, uh, the idea is just to touch some of the problems regarding the ESPs. And uh, so, I mean, there are, those are the most common gas, uh, uh, viscous uh, conditions, viscous fluids, uh, solid production, uh, some production, those are the most common, uh, you know, problems we have. But there are, of course, more problems, you know, low rate changes in, in the head, you know, when uh, it's, uh, the, the, we have like a, uh, gas uh, you know, surges or something like that. So many, many other situations, uh, but again, uh, the ones I just went through are the most common. Of course, you know, again, is uh, for every specific field, 
there are particular situations that should be you know analyzed and uh, properly you know addressed so uh, now i'm going to go through a specific i mean simple um esp design example so um um we have here is not the one. Sorry, yes, this is the one. So here we have um, the um, the ESP uh, system, uh, pressure system, we have the well, uh, wellhead pressure, the, or let's start from the reservoir, right here, downhole, uh, the reservoir pressure, we have a drawdown uh, up to the well bar, and then we have a, an extra drawdown pressure, uh, to the intake of the, the pressure or the in pump, so the pump, and then uh, the, the work done by the pressure, made by the pump in terms of increasing pressure. So we have the discharge pressure and from there uh, to the wellhead pressure. So uh, with this, we, we, we have to know you know, we have to know those uh, you, those pressure again in order to properly design or uh, understand what is the situation every every time we are dealing or we are uh, analyzing the performance of the pump. You know, and uh, so the pressure drops. You know, the pressure loss in the well bore. Uh, we have here the question. We have the well hair pressure, and then we have a the pressure drop due to the gravity uh, and the pressure drop due to the friction. In the case of the vertical uh, production of flow, we expect that 90% of the gravity, 90% uh, of the pressure is due to this second term gravity and 10% is due to friction. Friction is uh, basically the, the, due to the velocity uh, of the, the fluid in case where we have a high rate, you know, uh, maybe tomorrow we will explain in the ESP when we are uh, um, talking about the gas lift, how, you know, once we get the, the past the critical flow rate and start increasing the gas in the tubing, we are increasing the friction here to a point where basically uh, this is the dominant factor. So uh, to go here, we have an example. Uh, the well data is you know target production right here, 1,500. Uh, high water cut, we expect 100% or, you know, Sorry, the the gravity. Sorry, gravity of the 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 water, the reservoir pressure, the PI have uh, right here. Um, death. This is the set. Uh, the death of the perforations, six thousand three hundred fifty three feet. Um, surface tubing pressure, and tubing ID. And if we go through, you know, this general pressure drop equation for two in flow, which is right here, uh, we have, uh, we can go through, you know, the, and get the, the, the term, the pump pressure discharge, which is the, the target uh, pressure we are um, trying to get. 
and the tubing calculation considering the changes in the elevation, the uh, kinetic energy and the friction. So the, by going through, you know, the, the, this, you know, equation, we came, we can came up with this uh, pressure of the chart, which is a function of the uh, tubing head pressure, the um, setting depth of the perforation, and the rate, of course, you know, and uh, this number is a constant due to the the, the conversions and the the use of those equations. So the idea is to calculate the number of stages needed, you know, and the plot for different uh, frequencies and uh, calculate the, the motor, you know, the motor and the ESP, the PIP, PI tubing curve, you know. So, um with the using the this equation that we we have right here we are using this and then uh, which is uh, right here using those terms the production the depth of the perforation and the surface to pressure we have for that specific rate we have the pump discharge is right here so the intake of the uh, pressure intake calculation based on, of course, and, and considering a constant PI, we have the, the um, intake pressure calculation again, based on the number we have just calculated and the uh, PI and reservoir pressure and target production. We have, we calculated this, the, of course, uh, you know, the, the, Delta P, uh, we have uh, right here, and the, the head of the pump that must uh, generate is right here, which is a, uh, a function of the Delta P, the pressure drop, and also the density or viscosity of the, the fluid. So uh, using, in this case, um, mm, Using uh, the pump chart for target production 1,500, which is the one right here, we have right here for the, um, again, for this particular in case of uh, target production is uh, 1,500. We have the head capacity uh, is around 45, something like that, 45.5 feet per stage. So, uh, with that one, the number of the stages is, of course, um, you know, based on the feet per stages and uh, the head, so that we have calculated right, right here. So we have the number of stages, which is, in this case, is 87, again, uh, based on the calculation we have uh, performed. Uh, but again, one, um, the issue is that, um, uh, normally, uh, a stage one pump with 87 stages, the closer one is around 100 stages. So we have to consider the closest pump, of course, you know, you know above the, the number of required stages. So the, in this case, we have to consider something like 100 stages. Uh, so um, uh, horsepower per stage, you know, is uh, this case is uh, right here is um, the which is the uh, power which is this right here. For this, we have um, point A something like that right here, which is the 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 number we we have the this from here, and so the total horsepowers at 60, uh, 60 hertz. Are basically the the of course the the uh, multiplication of the the, the stages uh, horsepower per stage um, by the number of the stages. So we have right here the total uh, horsepower re required at sixty. Uh, so um, with this, um, in order to uh, calculate the, the 
or perform the nodal design, we have right here the, the IPL tubing performance curve is, uh, is based on the um, head of the, the inflow performance of the pump, right here, the blue curve. So we have right here, basically, is uh, this is the, this is the, um, this is this column right here. This is basically this chart, sorry. Um, sorry, um, in this case, we are using the, for the uh, pump discharge, we are using the question that we, uh, we developed right here. So for different rates, we are calculating right here, the pump discharge. And also we are calculating again, the well uh, flowing, um, flowing pressure and the head, see? And uh, from this chart, we have, you know, for different, for different rates, we have basically right here, we are reading, reading the, a different uh, production. We are, uh, this is basically this, this is the blue curve, which is the, the head capacity for this particular pump. So we are right here. Uh, is again is is uh, having this uh, the data from this curve. So in this case, um, we are, uh, but we need to uh, plot this is this system. It's right here. So uh, here we have uh, again the this is the uh, it's like a, a duplicating the the capacity of the pump and we have right here the outflow of uh, the pump the, the the performance of the pump which is this the one we we have right here the rate and the head for this, again, for this particular pump. So we have in this way, the, the performance curve for this type of, uh, of uh, pump. So as we, we see it right here, this is the 1,500, which is the expected rate, but uh, we have to be aware that, you know, if we change, either the two in size, of course, it will decrease, or in, you know, of course, the, the reservoir pressure is decreasing. So uh, in the same way, we have to expect that the, the this curve is moving down. So the rate, the rate of the, 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 the pump is, is, uh, is uh, producing is uh, lower. So we have to, I mean, work accordingly. Uh, with this, I hope, I mean, is uh, you get some ideas, this, I hope, uh, you know, the, the, the ideas that I have uh, mentioned here in this brief uh, time, and uh, it may help you. And uh, I'm really open to, to any time to discuss any, any again, I, I'm not, saying I'm expert, I have experience, uh, you know, facing many problems with this type of uh, uh, solution. As I mentioned here, you know, the, the, the productivity or the efficiency of the pump is right here, this yellow curve. But, you know, once you are out of this uh, area, the maximum efficient area, the pump efficient is uh, dropping really, really, really high. So again, I, I hope that uh, this may help you somehow and open to, to, to discuss any, any issue that you guys may have. 
And I appreciate really, you know, uh, attending this uh, brief uh, webinar. Again, um, any issue, please, you know, either through, you know, uh, PEA or you can contact me if, if you want. I appreciate, you know, a 